Civil War, the grand finale, and you all thought it was Appomattox. Well, you'll learn in this video, it wasn't Appomattox, as we learned more faces and places. At Bennett's place, as a matter of fact, it's a farm home of James Bennett, where Confederate General Joseph E. Johnston surrendered his army to Union General William T. Sherman, April 26, 1865. Johnston's surrender followed Lee's at Appomattox by 17 days and ended the Civil War in the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida. This is located on the North Carolina Civil War Trails. It's Bennett Place, the end of the war, Carolina's campaign. Travel across America with me and welcome to Bennett Place. Start your visit at the Historic Site Visitor Center. The guides are fantastic and they will explain probably more than you really even need to know about this historic site. Our guide told us all about this painting of Sherman and Johnston. After the failure of the first surrender negotiations, Ulysses S. Grant was ordered to take charge of the federal armies in North Carolina. But due to his loyalty to Sherman, he advised his friend to resume negotiations with the same terms given to Lee at Appomattox. Sherman demanded that Johnston return to the negotiating table or face the resumption of hostilities. The two met for a final time about noon on April 26. Sherman presented the more stringent terms with no mention of political or civil rights. Jefferson Davis rejected them and ordered Johnston to withdraw from the negotiations, escape with his cavalry, and continue to fight. However, Johnston, war-weary and realistic as to the Confederacy's fate, disobeyed Davis and continued the negotiations. He surrendered all troops in the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida. That's 89,270 soldiers. Parolees were issued to these Southern soldiers in May, 1865. Don't forget to subscribe. And while you're at it, hit the thumbs up. So it's not all about Appomattox Courthouse, which is a great place to go, and you'll want to go to the McLean House. But today, we're at the Bennett Farm. The two generals met upon the road, warmly greeting each other with extended hands. I bet. On a brow of a hill a few yards farther on, there was a small farmhouse to which they repaired for consultations. While the general officers and staffs who accompanied their respective chiefs fell after a few moments into amicable conversation, Major George Ward Nichols, aide-de-camp to Major General Sherman. Sherman had arrived by train at Durham Station on April 17th and was escorted northwest along the Raleigh to Hillsborough Road under a white flag. Meanwhile, Johnston and his Escorts rode eastward from Hillsborough, also led by a white flag. Although they had opposed one another for years, the men met face to face for the first time here at Bennett Place. After introducing themselves to the family, the two went to work inside the parlor. Sherman told Johnston of Lincoln's death and then offered him the same terms Grant had given Lee at Appomattox Courthouse. Johnston responded that they were too harsh because, unlike Lee's army, his forces were not surrounded and could therefore withdraw to fight another day. But he ultimately recommended one surrender agreement to end the war, and a surprise Sherman eagerly concurred. They agreed to return to the Bennett farm the next day. Your agreement touches among questions of such vital importance that, as soon as read, I addressed a note to the Secretary of War notifying him of their receipt and the importance of immediate action by the President, and suggested, in view of their importance, that the entire cabinet be called together, that all might give an expression of their opinions upon the matter. The result was a disapproval by the President of the basis laid down because Abraham Lincoln Lincoln had been assassinated just days prior. Andrew Johnson was the president. And you'll want to watch my video from Poor House to the White House, and it's all about Andrew Johnson. This all occurred under his presidency. President Andrew Johnson and cabinet members and the United States Congress considered the terms too lenient, especially in light of Lincoln's assassination. Sherman's problems multiplied when the agreement was leaked to the New York Herald, which reprinted it along with a harshly worded rebuttal. Accused by some of being a traitor, cabinet members discussed relieving Sherman of his command. Throughout the North, citizens were outraged by the terms and questioned Sherman's patriotism, intelligence, and even his sanity. The small visitor center is packed with great information and memorabilia. Like this regimental flag, it, this is a reproduction. It was copied from one of five surviving flags of the Richmond Depot 5th Bunting 
pattern. The original flag is in the collection of the North Carolina Museum of History in Raleigh. The flag was carried by the 51st Regiment, North Carolina Infantry, organized in Wilmington in April 1862. This unit was included in the Confederate forces surrendered to Major General Sherman at Bennett Place. Step outside and see the reproduction buildings of the Bennett's farm. And this large monument notes the history of the events on the evening of April 25th, when General Johnston asked another interview with General Sherman to renew negotiations. And on the 26th at 2 p.m., the generals met a third time in the Bennett House and signed the terms of a military convention under which 36,817 Confederate soldiers in North Carolina and 52,453 in Georgia and Florida laid down their arms. This monument marks the spot where the military force of the United States of America finally triumphed, establishing the principle of an indissoluble union. It marks also the spot of the last stand of the Confederacy in maintaining its ideal of indestructible states, an ideal which preserved to the American Union by virtue of the heroic fight grows in strength from year to year. Although most of North Carolina struggled to rebuild after the war, a small railroad stop of Durham Station began to grow as a result of interest in the area's unique bright leaf tobacco, which soldiers on both sides of the conflict had enjoyed. Many local farmers, some of whom were Confederate veterans, began to rejuvenate their farms. Soon the tobacco business flourished. Shops and factories sprang up, and on April 10, 1869, the North Carolina General Assembly voted to incorporate the new community of Durham. I want to encourage you to watch my video on the historic tobacco plantation. It's not far away. This tobacco plantation is from the Duke family, and the Duke family legacy is also discussed in my video of the Duke University Old World Chapel. It's flip-flops on the ground, unclassic road trip, and while you're in Raleigh and Durham, you've got to go eat it at Krispy Kreme. It's America's best donuts. And yes, I did a video on that also.